Hello everyone, this is Dr. Fan. When students study uniform circular motion, one of the biggest misconceptions is that some students might think centripetal force is a real force, but centripetal force is not a real force. Why that is the case? Let's discuss it today. Consider a car is moving in a circle with constant speed. If we do a free body diagram on this car, we know the car is under normal force, the car is also under gravity. That we know. But we also know that the car may need some friction for this car to turn. Let's just say the car has a friction goes to the right. If you look at this free body diagram, there is no centripetal force. So centripetal force should never show up on a free body diagram. But why when people discuss circular motion, people bring up centripetal force all the time? Let's evaluate this situation. So for a car experiencing uniform circular motion, the car moves in a circle, but also the speed of the car does not change. So at one moment, the car is moving along this direction. At another moment, the car is moving along this direction. The magnitude of the velocity does not change. But we know velocity is a vector. Velocity has both magnitude but also direction. You can clearly see that the direction of the velocity is changing. So that means the velocity is changing. So if velocity is changing, that means we have to have acceleration. So where is the acceleration for uniform circular motion? We know you cannot have acceleration along the tangent direction, otherwise the velocity magnitude would change. For uniform circular motion, you always have acceleration pointing to the center, and we call that acceleration centripetal acceleration. From vector or calculus calculation, we can find out the centripetal acceleration equals to v squared divided by r or omega squared times r or it equals to omega times v. This is our acceleration when any object is going through uniform circular motion, and this acceleration points to the center. And from Newton's second law, we know in order to have an acceleration, you have to have a net external force, and that net external force equals to mass times acceleration. And we know from Newton's second law, the net external force should have the same direction as your acceleration. So your net external force should also point to the center. And because this net external force always pointing to the center, we call this net external force centripetal force. This is where centripetal force come from. Now you understand centripetal force is not a force, but it's the net external force pointing to the center. And without this net external force, you cannot have centripetal acceleration. All right? So in this case, if you consider the car moving in the circle, so where is my net external force pointing to the center? Let's consider this is the rotation center. So this is the rotation radius. So I can construct my x-axis along this direction and my y-axis along this direction. So sigma fx equals to friction that pointing to the rotation center. So that equals to mass times my centripetal acceleration. And along the y direction, I have normal force minus gravity. And along y direction, there is no motion, so the net force is zero. And in this case, what is supporting my centripetal acceleration, which is friction? In other words, in this specific situation, the friction force acts as the centripetal force. Okay? Friction has a physics origin. Centripetal force is basically the net external force pointing to the center. All right, let's look at another example. This is a very classical example for circular motion, which is a roller coaster question. 
If you consider a roller coaster moves with constant speed around a loop, in order for this roller coaster to move in a circle, we know you have to have acceleration pointing to the center. So when you are at the bottom, your acceleration is going up. And when you are at the top, your acceleration is going down, pointing to the center. So how I can make sure I have this acceleration? Then I need to have net external force supporting my centripetal acceleration, which means my net external force equals to mass times centripetal acceleration. And again, I call this net external force pointing to the center as my centripetal force. Okay? Now let's do a free body diagram for the roller coaster at the bottom and at the top. When I evaluate the roller coaster at the bottom, I consider the direction going up as positive because this direction points to the center. So for the roller coaster at the bottom, I know it's under gravity. I know it's also under normal force. So for the bottom situation, the net external force pointing to the center, which is my centrifugal force, equals to normal force minus gravity, which equals to mass times centripetal acceleration. But for the top situation, my normal force is going down and my gravity is also going down. And remember, I want to choose my coordinate system pointing to the center. So I choose going down as my positive direction. Then if I write down Newton's second law, the net external force pointing to the center, which is my centripetal force, which equals to normal force plus gravity, which equals to mass times centripetal acceleration. And as you can see, in this case, centripetal force comes from normal force and gravity. But the centripetal force at the top and at the bottom are very different. Please pay attention. There is a minus sign here and there is a plus sign here, right? This is another example which showed centripetal force is the net external force in this example, the normal force and gravity, they are real forces with physics origin. But again, the centripetal force is just a net external force pointing to the center. Let's look at another example. If we consider you have a string and on one end, I fix the string. On the other end of the string, I tie a point mass to the string. And then I swing this ball in this horizontal circle. And in this case, I know my point mass is moving in a circle on a horizontal plane. So this is my rotation center. This is my radius, right? So because this little point mass is moving in this circle, so there should be an acceleration pointing to the center, right? So because I have this centripetal acceleration, then I know I need to have a net external force pointing to the center. And that net external force is my centripetal force. And if we do a free body diagram, we can tell exactly which force contributes to the centripetal force. Let's consider going to the left as my positive direction and going up as my positive y direction. And in this case, my point mass is under gravity and there is also a tension here, right? So if this angle is theta, that means this angle here is also theta, right? So along the horizontal direction, sigma fx, I have the tension force times sine theta. That's the net external force along x direction. That is also the next external force pointing to the center. So this is also my centripetal force and which equals to mass times centripetal acceleration. Along y direction, I have the other component of tension, which is Ft times cosine theta, and then minus Fg, which equals to zero, because there is no motion along the vertical direction. So if I label this as equation one and equation two. From equation two, I know my tension equals to Fg, divided by cosine theta. 
or you can write as mg divided by cosine theta. If I call this equation 3, and if I plug equation 3 into equation 1, I get my centripetal force equals to tension times sine theta, which would equal to mg divided by cosine theta times sine theta, which is mg tangent theta. All right, let's look at another situation. If we consider a car moving in a banked curve, right? In this case, the car is moving along this horizontal circle. And if we do a free body diagram on this car, we know this car is under gravity going down under normal force perpendicular to the ramp. If we assume there is no friction, these are the only forces. So how do we construct our coordinate system? Again, one of our coordinate systems should be pointing to the rotation center. The other one can be perpendicular to the rotation center, right? So if we know this incline angle is theta, then we basically know this angle is theta. Then basically we can say this angle is theta, right? Now let's write down the net external force along x direction, which is Fn times sine theta. That's it. And along y direction, I got Fn times cosine theta minus mg. And the car is not moving vertically, so along y direction, I got zero net force. And along horizontal direction, which is exactly the net external force pointing to the center. So in other words, this is my net external force pointing to the center. So this is my centripetal force, and which equals to mass times centripetal acceleration. If I call this equation 1 and this one equation 2, I can find my normal force, which is mg cosine theta. Let's call this equation 3. If I substitute equation 3 into equation 1, I get Fn times sine theta equals to mg divided by cosine theta times sine theta. What do I get? I get mg tangent theta again. So this is my centripetal force. This is my centripetal force. You may notice that this centripetal force is exactly the same as the previous example we just discussed. So the normal force here is equivalent to the tension in the string and point mass situation. All right, let's look at the last example. Consider the moon is orbiting around Earth every day, right? Because the moon is moving in a circle, so we know you should have acceleration pointing to the center. In this case, the center is the Earth, right? So you should have acceleration, which equals to v squared divided by r, right? Or omega squared times r here. So what is the r? The r is not the radius of Earth or moon. It is the distance from moon all the way to the center of Earth. So this is our r, right? So what force contributes to the centripetal force? In other words, we know if you have centripetal acceleration, you got to have a net external force pointing to the center, which provide this centripetal acceleration. So where does the force come from? That net external force, which is our centripetal force, comes from a force called a gravitational force. We can write the gravitational force as big G times the mass of Earth and the mass of Moon and divided by the distance square of the moon and the earth. So in other words, in this case, this gravitational force provides the centripetal force. Okay? All right. Hopefully using all these examples, I have showed very clearly centripetal force is not a real force with physics origin, but it's just a description for the net external force pointing to the center. Many other real forces like a normal force, gravitational force, tension, and friction, they can contribute and serve as the centripetal force. In today's video, I have demonstrated a lot of different situations, and you may notice that for circular motion, 
you always want to construct your coordinate system pointing to the center along radius. So for this case, this should be your coordinate system. For the roller coaster situation, if you are at the top, your positive direction should go down. And if you are at the bottom, your positive direction should go up. So for the car moving in a circle, this should be your coordinate system. For a point mass swinging by a string, this should be your x direction. This should be your y direction. And when you are doing calculation to find out your centripetal acceleration using the equation of v squared divided by r, remember, you have to always use the correct velocity and the correct radius. All right. With all this knowledge, we should be able to calculate the critical speed, critical tension, and the critical friction coefficient for circular motion, which we're going to discuss in a separate video. Thank you. I will see you next time.